Hi, I'm Tim and thanks for watching this video. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this, which is the new release from SM Lite and it's their SM Hub Nano. Well, what does this device do? It's a Zigbee controller, Matter controller and also has built into it Node Red. So if you want, you can actually control all your Zigbee devices from this or you can also link them into Home Assistant, Google Home or any smart home you want. So let's take a closer look at this device and then we'll go through some of the specifications and then in an upcoming video, I'll show you how to link it into Home Assistant with some Zigbee devices. So let's get to it. So here we are and as you can see, here we get the SM Hub Nano and it's a Linux based smart hub, the hub that runs full scale smart software. It's Linux based. It has Zigbee to MQTT, OTBR, which is an open thread border router. And we've also got PoE, so it can be powered by PoE and also USB-C. It can also be a Zigbee or Matter and Thread and it's ethernet based so you connect it via ethernet and as you can see it supports home assistant and other systems as well and inside the box you get the usual packaging which is the same as the SLZB series you also get a packet of screws and self adhesive fixing labels and also the allen key to fix the screws if you want to mount it via the screws option you also get the template so the ruler for mounting it and it gives you the two holes where you need to fix them to the wall if you want to do so so the sm hub itself is just like the slzb series so it's the same form factor same size and the casing is actually identical apart from of course the labels where it's saying sm light and then it's the model sm hub nano and it's the mg24 so you also get the antenna as well. So this has one antenna and that fixes in by the threaded screw option there. And then you can angle the antenna just like the other SLZB series. At the other end is the PoE connection. So that's the RJ45 and it's PoE 802.3 AF, which is just standard PoE and not PoE plus or plus plus. So it's just standard PoE powered or you can use the USB-C connection there. So you can power it via USB-C if you want to do so. On the top, there's a little reset button. Now, I don't think this actually does anything at the moment with this device. So it doesn't actually factory reset it. To reset it, you have to restore the operating system image, which there's instructions on the website how to do that should you want to factory reset it. So now that we've taken a look at that, We'll go on to the website and just go through some of the basic specifications and I'll show you some of the documentation as well. And then once we've done that, we'll connect this up and then I'll show you the web interface. So here we are on the SM Lite website and it's showing you the SM Hub Nano MG24 compact Linux based smart hub. So if we scroll down, you'll see the core overview and it's saying the Nano is a professional grade control hub running a Linux based system that can host apps locally. For example, Zigbee to MQTT, MQTT Broker, WireGuard, Tailscale, Matterbridge and more. Despite working seamlessly with smart home systems like Home Assistant, OpenHab, HomeSeer or others with Zigbee to MQTT and Matterbridge, it can also expose Zigbee devices directly to Google Home or Apple Home without any additional hubs. If we go to the next paragraph, it's saying the story behind SM Hub, and then we go to the technical vision. So it's a fully fledged Linux system, runs open source apps locally for stability and control. And then we go down to the gallery, then further down, what the SM Hub Nano can do. So it can run Zigbee to MQTT directly on the device and connect seamlessly to Home Assistant. So as I've said in the video intro, what I'll be doing is doing a follow up video and I'll show you how to connect 
the Zigbee devices into the SM Hub and then pass them through into Home Assistant. So keep a look out for that second video coming up soon after this one has been released. So then if we go on to the next tab, we've got the introduction here. So the SM Lite manuals. So this is the user guides, manuals and so on for everything you want to do on the SM Hub Nano. Then we go to the next tab and you'll see that there's categories there so you can run thread networks, access the SM Hub via external SSH client, connecting Zigbee using SM Hub as a thread border router for MATA devices. So you can actually connect MATA devices to this as well. Going on to the next tab, it's showing you connecting Zigbee to MQTT on SM Hub to Home Assistant. So there's a guide on how to do it there. But as I've said in the follow up video after this one, I'll be showing you how to do that. Then we get to the next tab. And if you want, you can actually update and restore it using type C USB C cable. So what you would do is download the zip firmware file, flash it onto the device, and then it will factory reset it if you want to do that. So now we've just taken a brief look at this. We'll then go on to the SM hub and log into the controller. And then I'll show you the apps in the device. So we'll get onto that now. So here we are, and as you can see, I've logged in to the SM Hub dashboard. So in the browser address bar, I've typed in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash SM Hub. This will then take you into the dashboard. And as you can see, the dashboard is actually fairly basic at the moment. Now, I believe they will be adding more features onto the dashboard eventually once they've uh, finished releasing the software and done various other updates as it's a fairly new device and only been released. If you're watching this in mid-December, it was released just at the end of November. So only a few weeks ago. So once you're in the dashboard, you can then at the left hand side, select the various menu options. So the second one down is the beta MQTT. And as you can see, this is enabled and running by default. So it looks like the usual Zigbee to MQTT interface where you would click on permit join and then it will add the devices and then they will appear in the various menu options here in the Zigbee to MQTT. So then moving down, we've got Matterbridge. Now that's actually not running at the moment, although it says running. I think that's just a bug in the software, um, but Matter bridge is not being installed however you can install it if you want to do so and i'll show you that shortly so moving down again we've got node red which is the visual programming language so if you want to program your smart devices via node red you could actually do that now i'm not familiar with it at the moment however if you are then this might be a useful addition to program your smart home devices connected to the sm hub here then moving down, we've got Z-Wave. Now for this, you will need an external antenna. So Z-Wave is not actually running at the moment, although again, it's saying it is running. That's a, just a bug in the system, I think. So then moving down, we've got apps. Now here is where you can select and install the apps directly onto the SM Hub. So for example, you can install Matterbridge, which is not installed. So if you want to do that, you just click install and that's Matterbridge to Zigbee to MQTT. Then moving across, we've got Matterbridge, we've got Node.js and we've got Node.red, which of course is already installed and it's showing it's installed. It shows the version number is running and also the latest version. You can also add in OpenThread. So if you want an OpenThread border router, you can install that. Then we've got Zigbee to MQTT and that of course is already installed and that's running, which I've just shown you in the left menu option here. And then we've also got Z-Wave. So that's for the left side menu option there. So as I've said, you'll need a external antenna, I believe, for Z-Wave. So these is all the applications that you can install. So then moving down, we've got the console. So here there's a terminal console, which you can use if you want to do so, or if, for example, technical support advise you to type commands in there that's what you would use the console for then moving down we've got settings where you get the authorization setting so here for example you can enter a username and password to access your sm hub then we've got general options where you set your time zone and the host name for your hub we've got ethernet 
So here it tells you the Ethernet connection. And we've also got Wi-Fi as well. So it has a built-in Wi-Fi 2.4 and Wi-Fi 5. Then we've got the USB option. So here it gives you information about the USB port. And then we've got the LTE 4G add-on. Now, as far as I'm aware, this SM Hub Nano does not support LTE 4G at the moment. So then if we move down, we've got MQTT. So here it's for your MQTT settings. So that's for the Mosquito Broker MQTT settings there, which if you're familiar with Home Assistant, then you'll know that they also appear in Home Assistant under the Mosquito MQTT Broker. Then we've got radios. So it's showing you the radio for the chipset and it's a Silicon Labs and it gives you the device port and the available RAM. Then we've got the update and restore option. So here you can update the firmware on the devices or restore. Then we've got WireGuard. So it does have built in WireGuard. So if you want to access it via WireGuard, you can do. So then going down from settings at the left hand side, we've got under development. So all these options are under development. So they are not enabled or available to select at the moment. So if you're familiar with Home Assistant and you want a separate Zigbee to MQTT controller, then this might be the device for you. Or if you're just starting out and want it, say, for Google Home, then this also could be a useful addition to that to add into your smart home controllers. So I hope you found this video useful. Keep a look out for the second part coming up soon, which I'll be showing you how to link the Zigbee to MQTT from this SM Hub into Home Assistant. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it useful. And of course, as always, I'll put useful links and information in the video description. So take care and I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.